Well, it's another fine episode we have for this evening, Julian. Oh, I, I'm very excited. So I want to ask you a question. Okay. Hit me. Uh, you've looked at menus before, right? You know. Yes. Okay, so you, you look to see what's available and you determine what you want. I yes. guess it's a way of putting that, it. That's usually how it goes. Well, sometimes you, it doesn't really work totally that way when you're looking at another beautiful woman. But when you're with oh. a girlfriend oh. or a spouse, <laughs> it's a little different. So if you get slapped in the arm or she kicks you in the shins or she doesn't want to give you a kiss at night, you say, look, honey, I was just looking at the menu. Just, I just looking at the menu. Wasn't ordering. Wasn't ordering. Okay, I like, I like that. So you cover well, your ass well, about halfway. Wasn't ordering. I was just looking Which at the menu. Which leads into the title of today's episode. Tell us the episode. Yeah, the title of today's episode is Cheaters, Infidels, Countrymen. <laughs> wow. So, yes, we're going to talk about infidelity. We're going to talk about cheating. Wow. So, my personal definition of cheating, the standard that I hold myself up to, and people have different standards, is that anything that you would not do in front of your significant other. So let me unpack that. So obviously, if, if you're in a committed relationship, sex is obviously, you wouldn't do that in front oh, of your... Oh, that's the major thing. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. do that in front of your significant other. But to me, it goes into the more intimate things. Like, if you're a man and you hug women when your girlfriend or wife or spouse is not around... And you don't do it when she's around, you're cheating. Oh, well, that, there's something going on. That's, yeah. You're if, flirting. You're indirectly flirting is what you're doing. Yeah. If you're a woman that when your boyfriend's around, you don't touch men, you know, like you don't you like you don't put that hand on the shoulder type of thing. And then when your boyfriend is not around or your husband is not around, you do that, then in my mind, you're cheating. You're, you're like, because morally, you know it. Morally, you know something You know exactly wrong. what you're doing. You know, you you know the fine line boundaries of the relationship and you're choosing to cross a little bit. Oh, yeah, because you already know where your situation is. You know, a lot of guys are like that. They're players. They think they, um, you know, they like to show off with a woman. They like to try to impress a little bit. And uh, what I usually do is I, 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 I use a strict different kind of a rule. All I do is, like, I, I grew up as, a, you know, I hug women when I see them, my relatives, my sisters-in-law, my daughters. And I, and I give the occasional... Uh, Peck on the cheek to uh, you know some of the children in the family that are that are adult children. In defense, that's like acculturated, you know, it which is. are you know how you grew up. Yeah, I, I, I maybe say Italian side because we're we're very you know, we're close in that sense. Yes, there's a lot of you know hugging and kissing kind of thing. You know, not the double kiss on the chin. That's a whole on the side of the face. That's a whole different oh, okay. silly thing. There. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you think about it, think about history. You know, like scandalous affairs, like cheating, like is. It's, it's, it's been around since the dawn of time, and it hasn't went anywhere. So you have, you know, Paris cheating with Helena Troy, Marilyn Monroe and John F. Kennedy, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Maria Shriver. You have Sandra Bullock and Jesse James. Yeah, some wild ones there. You have Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson, who's going to be the new Batman. Yeah, you know, that, that one wasn't going to last anyway. <laughs> you had Tiger Woods and his wife. And... In more recent news, you have the Jordan Woods, Tristan Thompson, Chloe Kardashian trifecta like that. that that's kind of wacky. I mean, we hear about that. That's like, yeah. Whoa. So we don't we don't really know what's going on with that right there, which is the which is the hottest one at the time. But it, it's crazy to think that so many people and so many people that are financially set, you know, these rich and wealthy people are cheating out there. Like what? Like what do you think causes you know or or sets the stage for that. Well, you know, they're 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 worth a lot of money. They're not like CEOs of a, of a company that's worth billions, but they're all worth a lot of money. These people, and a lot of it's just about the they live in a different echelon of impressions. So they try to impress everybody within their circle. Obviously, people that they see, you know, film related people, whatever it is, whatever their, their forte is. So you start to think that's almost a way that they're seducing people, whether they mean whether they mean to or not. No, I think it, everybody tries to heavily impress everybody, and they all think they're like specimens of God. They they all, they all like sometimes, and a lot of times in sports or whatever, maybe be movies and you know models and whatnot. They are some of the best, quote unquote, specimens out there, and they, they everybody wants to have the, that amazing sex with a, with a specimen male or or that specimen female. I definitely dig. I mean, that. they're not going to be they're not going to be laying it out for like you know just some slobby dudes. Just I mean, some Britney Spears, Spears may do something stupid like that because <laughs> she poor girl's got some issues and she just dates like the wrong men. But some of these people, Bradley Cooper, he's like dating Lady Gaga on the side. I seen that it's now. Like, yeah, I and mean, his, and his his model girlfriend was stunning. So I read an article and it. It pretty much laid out that 
men typically cheat when they're sexually unsatisfied and women they tend to cheat when they're emotionally unsatisfied it would make sense women do carry a lot more emotional baggage than we do and we, you know they they take things a little differently uh, they're just they're the thinkers the, the worriers you know we all do and men it's really it's the opposite of what you just said there it's, it's exactly what you said on the male side um <laughs> Guys think about sex a lot more, they say, than women do. They, they, we, some, they say we, yeah. we think about sex 50, 60 times a day. It, it, you know, <laughs> maybe a hundred for you. <laughs> I have a high sex drive, okay? Right, right. But there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, when mm -hmm. I was younger, I, I felt the same way. I was constantly, you know, in love. I mean, I'm still in love with my wife, but I mean, it was special, you know, when you're... When you're younger, you just you can't you keep your hands off of each other. But no, men are just totally aroused, really easy and real fast. Because we we are the world's greatest art connoisseurs. Now we said it before, maybe one of the earlier episodes that you know women are basically the finest form form of art. And yeah. that's not trying to put them in that kind of bad situation where you mm -hmm. call them a property or something. No, absolutely. But it's not. the uh, women just they move, they walk, they talk. They, We're very enamored dude, by women. Uh, absolutely. Come on now. Now this is funny. And it's and it's more with the science, the anthrop the anthropological, the uh, that point of view is that humans are not completely monogamous. Well, they're not supposed to be because most males uh, most males of the species aren't. And we're talking like lions and tigers yeah. and that kind of stuff. And you know, elephants and, elephants keep one spouse though. Yeah. Unless there's a death. I, I I have I have read that. So, and and it to me, like I said, it always seems funny. When like when you see a guy that has extramarital affairs, and he finds out that his wife is cheating, how are you hurt? You were cheating as well. Well, you don't know that. What who's who's saying the woman's I, not just cheating on her own? I'm just saying in oh, the, in the, in the, the cases they, that the it case happens, like where it's, sure. where it's both people cheating. Like I never understood when the other person gets mad. More times I've seen it on the male side, but it's like, how are you mad? You were cheating too. Because we're fucking hotheads and we're hardheads, and we and we don't like to accept when we're wrong. And it's a, it's definitely a control and issue. To, it is a control issue because males just got to be the foot on top yeah, of everything. Yeah, because we want to we want to have sex with who we want to have sex with, but at the same time we want to control who our partner is having sex with, even though we're breaking the bylaws of the marriage or you know being boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever holding pattern that we. Well, find we see we seem we seem to resort back to like the earliest forms of, of uh, semi civilized man. That's all. It's just semi civilized. It, 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 Civilized because we still we would still be killing his cave people and we'd still be fucking his cave people. You know, there's probably a lot of there probably wasn't a lot of single spouses in the old caveman world the days. They were just a few steps away from you know crawling out of the in tadpole state or whatever. Now, so you know, what I'm saying I think man got used to this uh, having their own wife thing yeah. somewhere along the line because you had to provide for the one woman. It's easier to you, know, you can't do a, a brood. Well, the lions have uh, they have the they have the lion brood, right? Yes. Okay, he's got a he's got a you gotta make love to all these these. You can't females. be a polygamist, pretty much. Correct. You can't have all the, you know. But no, he, I also wives. think he couldn't support all those all those female uh, and all their offspring that he gave her. Yes. as their lions. So I, so the lion only keeps. He doesn't have like a hundred uh, ladies he messes with. His brood. He's got like maybe three yes. women in there and stuff. But I think that's maybe that's why I'm guessing why as humans we got back to that one one companion type of thing because it's easier to take care of one so person. it's a social structure well it's about it's about civilization too and social structure they make they make sure everybody that we can sustain as a civilization because you had two not, wives you probably yeah. couldn't do it you'd lose children not now that, the kings that. and queens of all these big countries that used to have multiple you know harems and whatnot you know they they left a lot of children in the world you know and stuff like that you know what i also find funny like if you think about music there's a lot of huge songs based on cheating. Oh, you had that Shaggy one. It wasn't me. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> remembers that. You had TLC Creep, you know. Yeah. You had uh, Ja Rule. He had a, he had a oh, singer on Oh, there's a bunch. I wish I could think of the titles. There was, a, there was a, a good selection of those in the Motown era, on the pop music, on the radios. There's always people singing this stuff. You know, a lot of times men finally realize sometimes how much they really they love their woman or their girlfriend or whatever it might be. Their significant significant other after they see somebody else cheats on on uh, his wife, and you say, "Well, I, you know, I, I really do love you. I didn't mean to do that. You know, now I'm really bent out of shape because I'm cheating." Sometimes a cheat thing helps a wedding, helps a a gathering out a little bit. Doesn't save the day always, but the female and the male sometimes can get it together again. No, you're exactly right. When I was doing the research for this episode, it said that you know the extramarital affairs don't always ruin the relationship. Correct. Because they sometimes they're, they're the appreciate them better. Because and 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 like we talked about in a in a previous episode, people don't communicate. So once this 
big thing gets exposed, you know, once this information is dis disclosed, now we have to talk about it. Sure. And a lot of times, you know, not saying that cheating is a good thing. No, but, it, but just not, it's, but it's it part just, of how it works once in yeah, a while. It's, just, it, you know? it's not it's, planned. Yeah, yeah it, and to me, it's very, it's very interesting that when these things happen. I see it sometimes. I've seen it, you know, on the job. I've seen women who I know are directly flirting with me used to come through with the wedding ring, and now the wedding <laughs> ring has disappeared. I'm like, I know you just didn't get a divorce, you know, two days ago. You know, I know that's not how it works, but I know there's a lot of significance with the wedding ring, and I wonder sometimes, like, are these women just taking it off as a way to, you know, to, to kind of, like... You know, you ever see the movies where like the guy puts yeah. the the picture of his wife down where he's yeah, having yeah. sex in his bed? Yeah, I think you know, it has, not I think it has a psychological. Shame. It has a meaning. Whatever it is, there's there's physical meaning to it, and, there, and there's obviously props that you lay down, like you said, and whatnot. I think uh, when that happens, that's either side shooting across the bow a little bit, saying like, you know, I need a little bit of a breather. I'm gonna go have a couple of wines with one of my girlfriends or something, or my one of my buddies. And I just need to catch a break, you know. So he takes the ring off. So now he can talk with his buddy real tight, like and say like, I'm having problems, blah blah blah. It's kind of funny. You put it back on, it's all. They, they, a little more of a protection thing. Yeah. Like a lot of times you see these absolutely beautiful, stunning women out sometimes. They're middle, middle class type, middle age type, like, you know, yeah. like 20 year olds. And uh, they're just totally, uh, you know, smoke show. It's just state of the art type mm -hmm. of beautiful women. And, uh, you, and you know you're never going to get her or if, if you were a player kind of person or if you were a, a bachelor looking to pick up a woman or whatever, you know. And, um, but that ring does sometimes say, yeah, this is, this is, this says I, I'm untouchable. Yeah, but, but I'm not necessarily always not untouchable. Yeah, you have to be a, a hell of a player to be able to have a woman out with that ring and still be able to pick her up, take her to bed, and she yeah. had the ring on and she's like, "Holy cow, 45 years old and killer, beautiful." Ooh. Yeah, at my age now, that's the first thing I look for when when I see any woman that I'm attracted to on any level. I look for the wedding ring. I'm like, boom, you know. And if I see it, you know, it is what it is. You know, it shoots some. It shoots a lot of nice prestige out to, for the woman also when she's Absolutely. at a social gathering or whatever it might be. You see this total, you know, beautiful woman. She's got the ring on and she's really wears herself well. You know, beautiful height and the whole nine yards. The ring says like, like I got somebody that knows how to take care of this. Yes. So it's a, there, there's a bit of a statement that goes on in that sense. It plays a lot of power in many yeah, a lot no, of power tricks. And, and it it plays into that. It plays in the. The hyper gamey aspect where they say that women tend to, you know, choose men that can provide over, you know, any other quality. Also, to cross over real fast, what do you think about, what are your thoughts on emotional cheating? There's no physical cheating at all going on, but it's emotional. You know, where a man may be confiding in another woman, pulling that energy and that interaction away from his woman, you know, vice versa, you know. Well, I, I, I haven't seen it in my relationship or my marriage or anything like that, but I have seen, you know, certain circles of people you're with where it's like, you know, some guy, and his buddy is his best friend, right? This fellow fella and his wife does not get along with his wife. Yeah. Right? So the two guys grew up together. The one guy's wife does, can't stand the other one. And the husband of that wife. Yeah. Also knows it a little bit, but he's got a sort of semi side with the wife, causes a lot of tension. So there's like there's sometimes there's extra flirting that goes on. They try yeah. to outdo each other. Like I like yeah. the man better than you do. It's really it's really screwy. It's actually probably even the most dangerous because it nobody's really nobody's really having sex or doing anything else. It all happens through you know bullshit tactics, almost very immature tactics. Yeah, and then you're starting to build connection because there's a yeah. semi connection with sex because it's physical, but you can kind of detach from that, but. If you're cheating emotionally, you're starting to intertwine with each other. You have like this symbiotic relationship where it's like it's me and you against the world, and we see each you know we see each other's perspective, and I get you and you get me, and then that may lead to the physical you know infidelity. But do you see emotional cheating at the same level as physical cheating? Uh, no, I don't say it's identical or it's close i think it's uh you know it's within range which one would you say is worse the the, the actual physical sex the one. physical that that because you're you know somebody's doing you know somebody's inserting something and yeah. something and that's a little nuts the other way around never really kind of gets to the physical aspect so it's, it's it has more of an impact in a psychological way it doesn't the physical thing but with that people can patch those up sometimes also if that happens because or, there never was sex sometimes. or or people may cheat and never tell the spouse and just rebuild the relationship and kind of just keep that skeleton tucked in the closet. But you got to think about this. Then you have crime of passion law. See my wife in bed with another man, shot him both. You get off because, you you know, it was the heat of the moment. That's, it was that's amazing so that law is still in the books or whatever it is. Because that's really kind of a bit of a, it's, it has a different term than that. Yes. But, I mean, it still is, a, it's very old school when you think about it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going back to like the biblical times, you know. 
Yeah, and I get it because you're breaking the sanctity of the marriage, but it, it, it still blows my mind that you treat, you know, cheating is cheating in such a regard that a man can get away with murder. Here's an example. Yeah, here's an example. It leads to murder, too, sometimes. A lot of times uh, people will meet at, you know, at a, and they work in a factory or maybe they're in management or they work in an office situation. They get like that romance. They, a guy meets a girl, a girl meets a guy, and they're able, they're able to sort of connect. And they got something going on that hasn't led to sex yet. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But, um, but you know, he's fought with her all day at work. I mean, you can't get away with it now because when you do that now, People say it's sexual harassment, but prior to the popularity of the sexual harassment phrase that's been yeah. happening the last two or three years, it's very important that it's happening also. And just um, just prior to that, what I was about to say is people got away with it like crazy, and then they had these little these little romances. They weren't touching. They weren't doing anything, but is that a form of cheating? I believe so. I believe so, too. So you, you got to think, in the times that we live in, you have swingers open marriages you have movies like the law where you got the guys cheating is it's so pronounced in our society do you think it's ever going to go away or just going to you know people are just going to cheat does you know it's already it, built it, well in. it's it's never kind of gone away it's been it's in different fashions we've seen so it's definitely not going to leave because humans are you know for as smart as we are we're really not as smart as we are yes look i'm going to wrap this up in a second but i wanted to talk about something real fast uh a big big fan of history julius caesar he started a second capital in the Roman Empire in Alexandria, Egypt. So he could not face his wife back in Rome. Oh, wow. Because Cleopatra was like the best yes. sex he'd ever had in his life. So he says, guess what? I'm going to have a second capital in Egypt. You guys worry about the one back in Rome. That was over a woman. That's powerful. That is powerful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to come back to this issue. We are not done with this. This is only part one, maybe part one of many. Thank you, everybody. Thank you much. Into Any boys in. out. It was. It was like like walk this way. Yeah, yeah. I run DMC. Yeah, Everybody yeah. was having a good time. And and you were telling me earlier that that kind of revived Aerosmith. Yeah, it did actually. Yeah, Aerosmith was um, down on their luck a little bit. They hadn't had any, any hit records for a while because they were part of more of a like a, a journey hard rock type of a feel. Journey and what other other bands that came out around that time and rock was changing. You know, under the threat of uh, you know disco and stuff. You know. Fleetwood Mac was out. Yeah. They even, even the Eagles. I mean, the Eagles have oh, songs on. Hotel California yeah. is one Hotel of my Hotel California favorite is a great song. songs. But there's songs on that record that are actually rock disco songs. I believe that. You know, it's like um, so everybody had to had to make a move to make some disco records. But but love is the answer. Like Todd Rundgren saying, these were these gold fashioned soul songs, and they just say a lot. They're pop songs. But the magic's in the lyrics, you know, like... Definitely. We're influenced by lyrics because we're humans, you know? Yeah. We hear, it affects our brains. It stimulates the mind. It, yeah. And, and music takes you to a certain place. It does. And when, and when when we listen to music that we haven't heard, and maybe music that we heard like 20 years ago, 10 years ago, it takes us back to that time. It transports us to that place and to those feelings. And, and those feelings were great times. I love oh, it. Yeah. There's a definite spirituality to music. That, that transcends a lot of things. Like the language of music, like you said, my friend, is a language of love. And it's universal. A good song is accepted by everybody, no oh, matter what.